If you are still confused about retinoids and retinols and what is the better choice for your skin type, this might be the video created just for you. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. We are going to be talking about retinoids and retinols and which is a better choice for your skin type. After I did a video on retinols as well as retinol serums and retinoids, the primary question that I keep getting back again and again is what is a better choice for me? And I completely understand your pain because it is so confusing and so overwhelming to decide which is the right choice for you. My attempt is going to be largely to make you understand the difference between retinoids and retinol, helping you in making a better choice. So with that, let's get started. So for this particular video, I have an outline with me because this is such a vast chapter and I want to just stick to this particular uh, conversation about which is a better choice for you. Before we get started, it's very important to understand that all retinoid and retinol, retinahyde and retinol palmitate are all under one umbrella called the retinoids. Retinoids are vitamin A derivatives and have been studied and has immense amount of data and scientific studies which show that it's one of the best anti-aging ingredient for you in your skincare. However, the confusion comes because a lot of people use retinols and retinoid interchangeably, which is not how it really works. To better understand that, it's important to understand the table of how retinoids are created. So retinoid is an umbrella term for all different types of derivatives. So retinoic acid, retinahyde, palmitate, retinol or are all together known as retinoids. If you want to make sure that you're getting the right retinoid for your skin type, it's very important to understand which type of retinoid you are going to be using. So if you would like, I can have this in a down label, a downloadable form for you and you could get that as well. So right on top, we have the retinoic acid and this particular variation of uh, retinoid is the strongest and has the most amount of effect on your skin. And as you can see, there are other variations which come under the retinoic acid and as far removed as they are from retinoic acid, the more conversion steps this particular form has to take to uh, release finally retinoic acid. Now remember this conversion not only depends on the type of retinoid but also depends on your type of skin plus what skin concerns you have and also what other ingredients you are using. So it's best advised if you're looking for good results to stay closer to tetanoic acid. Tetanoic acid is also an acid which is uh, actually given by prescription in the US and in India of course they are available across you can just go to a pharmacist and get the, get the tetanoic acid. Tetanoic acid is in India known as retin A. With that, we also have adapalene, which is known as Differin in the market. Adapalene is better suited if you have anti-aging concerns, but you also have pigmentation and you have acne because it does have benzoyl peroxide with it. So it gives you good um, action, uh, good um, results if you have acne concerns along with your anti-aging concerns. However, uh, remember that retinoic acid also helps with acne. More on that as we go further into the video. Along with tretinoic acid, you also have HPR, which is touted to be as good as tretinoic acid, but it does not have the same studies, the same kind of data that tretinoic acid has. So, uh, and also, it is also known as gran active retinoid, which the minimalist has, the ordinary has. But if I were to choose between the HPR variation and the tretinoic variation, I would consider what age group are you in and what are your skin goals. But remember, tetanoic acid is the acid of choice when you have big goals for your skin, whether they are acne or whether they are even anti-aging. So as you can see over here, we have the tretinoic and then we have the adapalene and we have the retinols. We have retinol, retinol palmitate, and we have retinahyde. So all of these are variations. Typically, retinols and, the, uh, and these variations are available in your over-the-counter serums. I've done a video on this. It's going to be available here. Please do have a look. It's going to be listed over here or it's going to be in the description box. One of the two places. Um, the tretinoic acid typically you only get as a condensed tube and it's available at a chemist. Since uh, in India, both of these are available without prescription, I'm going to be talking about these in the strengths that they have for your skin and what can you expect. Retinoids are magical for skin. They are absolutely the bullet that you need for anti-aging and for actually transforming your skin. So if you are looking at including retinoid in your skincare, it's important to understand what your skin goal is and also what can you expect from that particular variation of retinoid. 
Keep in mind that as far removed they are, the effect will differ. But as a class of ingredients, this is what retinoids can do for your skin. Number one, they're able to hit directly the retinoid receptor in our skin. And when that receptor gets activated, the collagen in our skin increases. And with increased collagen, you can expect your skin to be firmer, definitely more elastic and supple. It's going to be definitely softer and more plumper. Along with that, it also improves the skin cell turnover. That means as we age, you know, our skin cell turnover goes from when you're, when you're under 20, it goes from between 10, 15 days to about 20 days and as we age it moves down to 30, 35 days, 45 days and then pretty much around 60 days till it just doesn't matter how slow it is because you're anyway going to be really, really old. So, um, so retinoids help in making sure that the cell turnover is in a rhythmic and a good a cycle of about 20, 25 days. Now, this is what you want for your skin to look always younger. So with that, they also thin out the stratum corneum of our skin. Stratum corneum is the topmost layer and what it does is that because it thins it out, your skin looks more glowy and looks more fresh and definitely looks very soft, which is not damaging to the skin at all in any way. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, it's going to thin out my skin, therefore it's going to wrinkle faster. That's not really how it works because while it is thinning the stratum corneum, the retinoids also thicken the lower parts of the skin. So they thin the stratum corneum, but they make the lower parts of your skin thicker, therefore adding a lot of strength and viability to your skin. So as a result of using retinoids, you can expect your skin to be extremely soft, very supple, definitely have a glow and definitely be brighter. It does not, you know, become dull or uneven or gray or um, very wrinkly and texturized if you're using retinoids on a very regular basis. So retinoids are highly recommended not only as an anti-aging ingredient in your skin, but also to make your skin look healthy. And my primary goal is really to have healthy skin. It's not so much that, you know, do you have wrinkles or not? Because I definitely have wrinkles and I'm quite proud of them because, you know, uh, definitely adds wisdom to your to your personality and to, you, to, to who you are. So it's not about shying away from the wrinkles, but definitely making your skin healthier so that it's able to fight the pollutants better, is able to fight UVB damage better. And for that, retinoids are incredibly important for your skincare. Now, as we start using retinoids in our skin, there is a, an adjustment process that our skin goes through. Now, again, depending on what type of variation of retinoid you use, your skin will have varying amount of reaction to the retinoids. When I say reaction, it's a good type of reaction that your skin is going to have. However, that doesn't mean that you should go through the extreme peeling, extreme redness and sensitivity that your skin can get with retinoids. What you can expect is a little bit of irritation. You can expect uh, peeling. You can expect some really sensitive spots and some burning as well and even sensitizing to your skin. But if you use them smartly, those can be um, neutralized very, very easily or definitely minimized. You will not find or you will not experience any of these reactions when you choose the retinoid variations below tretinoic acid. So the retinols, the pamites, retinahyde will have no such reaction. At the most, they might have a little bit of sensitization and maybe a little bit of irritation, but very mild irritation. Not, nothing that should upset you or should be very visible on your skin unless you have very, very sensitive skin. And for, I'm also going to be doing a um, video on how to use retinoids for different types of skins, so stay tuned for that. Um, so this particular topic, let's shift it to that video, otherwise this video is going to be endless. Uh, so what can you do to minimize the effects of, of tretinoic on your skin? Well, the thing is to go slow when you use. Keep in mind that when you start using tretinoic acid or retin-A, you're looking for at least three months to your skin to start adjusting to it. So with tretinoic acid, what you can do is begin with very little. The first, use it once a week, then increase it to twice a week, and then increase it to thrice a week, and then go on. Your adjustment period is three months. So you can choose, listening to your skin, what is the variation you want to be at. Also, when you're beginning, you're fresh, you're at a version, it's important, virgin. It's important that you can that you first buffer the retin-A just so your skin doesn't have to go through the peeling and the inflammation. A good way to do that is to use a good moisturizer under your retin-A. Use the moisturizer, let it sit for about five minutes, and then go in with the uh, tretinoic acid. 
and uh, as you progress as your skin becomes more and more uh, adjusted to the tetanoic acid you can reduce the moisturizer uh, that you're using and come to a point where you actually don't need the moisture you just moisturize it. you're just going to use the retin-a directly on your skin give it about 10-15 minutes and then go in with the moisturizer but there are many many ways in how you can actually break your skin into retinoic acid use and i'm going to be again doing a separate video for that because that itself is a video in its own right stay tuned for that as well so once you've gone through the retinization process then you can start using retin a for the rest of your life literally don't give in if your skin is reacting too much or your skin is taking a lot of time to adjust because the longer you use vitamin a the better effect it has on your skin. It's a very cumulative advantage over a period of time. So it's not like you can use it for one year and you'll get all the results. I've been using it for the last six or seven years and there's some effects I'm only seeing now. So uh, I highly recommend that once you start using tetanoic acid, stay with it because it's only going to do good to your skin. Also, when you start using it initially, stay away from these areas. You know your eye area stay away from near the nose stay away from the mouth but as you progress you can definitely go much closer to these areas and more about that in the next video sometime yeah if i start talking about everything this video just becomes endless i don't want to do that so with that if you are about 25 and you're looking at starting a retinol journey there are so many retinol serums available for you in the market i've done a video on that please do have a look it's going to be listed here or definitely in the description box but for the understanding of this particular video, I'm going to share a few random retinol serums that I picked up. It's nothing to do with their efficacy. I just want you to know better. So I have picked up three retinol serums that, uh, from the retinol serums that I have with me. There is one from Avene. Uh, it's called Physio Lift, which is supposed to be a very good product. Then there is one from CGG called Youth Portion Retinol Serum. And there is from Dot & Key called uh, Time Reverse Retinol Serum. Now, if you see the CGG, now all of these are variations of retinoid. They are not retinoic acid. So therefore, because they're variations and, uh, you know, far removed from retinoic acid, they are very gentle on your skin. They're not going to give you any irritation and they're not, not going to give you any sensitization. If they do, you just have to make sure that you're using little to begin with and help your skin build up to using about two drops and use it about thrice a week. It's very important that when you pick up your retinol serum, you understand how the ingredients are listed. Yes, in India, we don't have ingredients listed by law. Some of the uh, you know, claims are wrong. Some of the listings are wrong. But hey, that's all we have to go with. There's nothing else you can do, right? Uh, for this particular CGG retinol serum that I have, this uh, actually has retinol listed right as the first ingredient in this uh, ingredient list which is very surprising for me because generally it is either third or fourth but this one has the first ingredient it might have very good uh, effect on your skin especially if you are a retinoid virgin or if you are starting this at a very early age so between 25 to 30 32 this is a good uh, serum to use if you have issues of pigmentation uneven skin tone or if you have um, you know your skin looks very dry and dull so this could be a good retinol all over there and similarly there are so many retinol serums that you could pick this is not the only one but one example that i'm giving you where retinol is right on top of the ingredient list so better efficacy and definitely better results so learn to read the ingredients the next one is the dot and key time reversal retinol in this particular product the retinol palmitate that they're using is way down in the ingredient list so I would put this for someone who's an absolute beginner but has a lot of active lifestyle outside of the house you know or has um, acne scars or has uh, it's not going to help you with the acne but it can definitely help you with the acne scars and is looking for introducing retinol at an early age is an extremely mild serum to use so even if you're 25 32 and you just want to start using retinols and you want a safe product not going to give you any irritation and still give you some kind of an effect this is a good uh, product to use in that case if you were to come and ask me hey i'm someone to start retinols right now and i want my skin to look brighter glowy i want uh, to start you know i have a little bit of scars i have a little bit of uneven skin tone and i have oily skin i would recommend this for you if you had the same kind of concerns but you had dry sensitive skin i would recommend this for you just because the percentage is higher than this as compared to this now, 
There's another product called the Physiolift. Now, this is from Avene, which is a very known brand in skincare. Now, in this also, the retinol is far removed. And I have used the whole damn bottle. And I can't say that I had any effect apart from the fact that I definitely look shades fairer, which was not my goal for my skin in any case, you know. So it's never to do with the money or that you're going to be spending on the skincare is what I keep learning over and over again between all my expenses for, for, with skincare. Uh, on a scale of one to five, I would give this a one in efficacy. I would give this definitely a 3.5 and I would give this again a 3.5 very well balanced, well formulated products. Now, if you're looking for the big thing, the big load, you're looking for anti-aging benefits, you have massive scarring, you have acne, not breakouts, which is a skin condition, and you do require prescription strength retinoic. And that comes in the form of the Retin-A, which is a very humble tube. It's I think 400 rupees ka tube. It's available in the market. Go to a pharmacy and you'll get it. But man, does it have power. And I'm so surprised that people say they don't want to use this because, you know, it's a sasta hai. You know, does it really deliver or not? If anything delivers on this planet, it is Retin-A. Drum roll. So you're going to be using this. Or you could be using the retinoid 2% or the HPR 2% from the minimalist. The problem is that the efficacy of this is for sure, you know, you're going to be 120% getting a fabulous skin in the next two years when you start using this. With HPR, you will get fabulous skin, but we don't know whether it's going to be in two years or three years or will it have the same effect as this or not because this is backed by data and science, whereas this is a fairly new entrant in the retinoid family. So it doesn't have the data with it. However, if you have very dry sensitive skin and your skin is very easily inflamed and uh, has and gets irritated very fast, then I would definitely advise you to start with this because this does not give you the same irritation and the same burning and sensitivity that this has the potential to give you. So depending on your skin type, go with either this or this. I'm going to be doing a whole video on how to introduce this into your skin. The entire schedule starting from day one to day 98 because that's the time it takes for your skin to get completely adjusted to it. So stay tuned for that. With that, I come to the end of the video and I hope this was helpful for you in making a choice. I'm going to wrap this up by saying that if you are between 38 and above, don't waste your time with all the retinol serums, the thousands of retinol serums available in the market because your primary concern is anti-aging and to make sure your skin doesn't get uneven pigmentation and most importantly to reverse the UV damage which we all have over a period of time it does correct. And also remember your collagen is depleting. We lose almost 1% collagen every year. So at 38, 40, kafi khatam ho gaya. You require the power and the force of a Retin-A. So don't waste time and effort and money on the retinol serums. However, if you're beginning your 20, early 20s, you could experiment with retinol serums. And as you start between 35, and you are beginning to learn about Retin-A and you begin to learn about the magic retinoids, you want to introduce it, you are unsure, then go in with the retinoid Gran Active or HPR. Gran Active is basically the commercial name for uh, uh, HPR. So you could start with this because you will be able to introduce this very easily and very, very calmly into your skincare. Especially when you're working, you don't want to go to office with inflamed red skin with dry patches and all that. So this is good. I hope that was of help for you. If you have questions, please do leave them in the comment section and let me know what your experience is. The next coming videos, I'm going to be doing detailing on your schedule for Retin-A. I'm also going to be talking about how to make a better choice for different skin concerns like acne, pigmentation, blah, 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 and all of those stuff. So there's going to be a whole series of videos coming through. Till I catch you next time, get on the retinoid and bless your skin with plumpness, suppleness, wrinkle-free and most importantly healthy enough to fight the uh, environmental polluters as well as the onslaught of aging. Till we catch you next time, be good to your skin and hair. Ciao!